Good morning up at church. Woo! I'm excited. If you can't tell, we're a little excited around here. It's Baptism Sunday. We need to go ahead and give God some awesome praise. So excited. That last song that we've done, it's uh, called Shake. And it's all about the change that happens in our lives whenever we accept Jesus Christ. And I am so thankful for the blood of Jesus. And being able to be saved. We can say we're saved. We'll never taste the sting of death. We get to live forever and ever in heaven with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I mean, that's awesome to praise God about. It's awesome. So we get excited about these things. And we're doing... I was asked, how in the world are you going to tie baptism into the rich and famous? And it's because... What we don't understand, when we are alive in Jesus, we've got it made. But we honestly, we have more than what we consider rich and famous people do. Now, Super Dave Dinner's intro, he was talking about these famous wrestlers. And there's some of them that make a whole lot of money. I mean, a whole lot of money. And don't get me wrong, they've got things that you wouldn't even dream of. And they'll be able to have these unbelievable, amazing, just things like, you wouldn't think about like an automatic toilet paper dispenser. <laughs> you can buy one for yourself. They're $5,999. It'll automatically unroll the toilet paper for you. I mean, me being the conventional redneck that I am, I can just go over there and whip my own. <laughs> right? Or, or, or the heated towel rack. Now, I have discovered the redneck way of doing that. All it takes is hanging your towel up and a hair dryer set on high and you'll heat your towel for you. Or you can also put it to the dryer before you get out and that would be your nice warm towel so you can get out of the shower and have your nice warm towel. And we think of this stuff about the rich and famous. They have these elaborate, elaborate things. And I'm sure that you know somebody that whenever you hear the word rich and famous, there's somebody that you comes to your mind. Now I want you to think about that. When you think of the rich and famous, anybody rich or anybody famous, who would that be? Just... Just pick that out in your mind. Who would that be? Because I'm going to count to three and I want you to haul out that person's name. Okay? Whoever it is. It don't matter. It could be somebody famous. It could be, somebody, it could be your parents. It, it can be you. Uh, whatever. But I want you to haul out that person's name. So I want you to pick who it is. Somebody rich and famous. I want you to think who that is. Are you ready? One. Get ready to call it out. Two. Three. Call it out. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we had a whole lot of names being out there. But we all have an idea of somebody that's rich and famous. Somebody that's rich and famous. But my question is, what makes somebody rich and famous? What is it that makes it? You know, is, is it the kind of car you drive? Is it how big your house is? Is it the, the job that you have? You know, is it the clothes you wear? Is it the type of sunglasses you have? Is it your hairstylist? Is it the matter if you what, what is it that makes you rich and famous? And we talked about this last week, that first you have to define what rich is. You know, that answer to that question can impact our entire lives forever. What we view as being rich. Now, the problem with a lot of rich and famous people is, is that they've got it defined to money or their possessions. And so they'll spend their money frivolous over the things that we would call maybe ridiculous. If that's what we're, looking, what we're searching for. But then what happens when you have everything? When you can buy anything you want, what, you know, what, what's next? What do you consider to be rich and famous? Is it, is it where you live or is it the square footage of your house? What is it that you have to have before you can be considered rich? And we look at people and we're like, man, I would, if I just had their money or if I just had their whatever or if I had their job, man, I would have it made. What do you consider being rich? Because when I say that your answer to this question is that it'll greatly, you know, impact you, it's because we can be rich. Every one of us. It depends on how you define rich. That it can it can change your complete and total life. It'll change your attitude, it'll change the way that you look at others. All by how you define being rich. Because what I want to do today, I'm going to show you two different people. And they were both rich. One was rich and wealthy, and the other was not. But they were both unbelievably rich. And I'm going to show you the commonality between these two. This is amazing. This is Acts chapter 8, and it's an awesome story. One of my favorites in the Bible. I know I say that every week because the Bible is awesome. We're going to go to Acts chapter 8. 
It's awesome. You can go wherever you want to in the Bible, but we're going to go to Acts chapter 8. Um, it's all good. You can read whatever you want to. But in Acts chapter 8, you see what happens is people are on fire for God. They love the church. People are being baptized left and right. They're talking about Jesus. And you're seeing a whole bunch of people being saved. And then in Acts chapter 8, you're reading about this one man. It is in Acts chapter 8 and verse 4. And I love this. It says, But the believers who were scattered, they preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria, and he told the people there about the Messiah. I love this. He's telling them about Jesus. Now, verse 6. Crowds listened intently to Philip because they were eager to hear his message and see the miraculous signs that he did. Now, this is awesome. You got Philip. Philip, he's a preacher. And he's what you consider a traveling preacher. He was going around and he was telling everybody, everybody about Jesus. And I love this. And that's why I like it verse 6. They crowds, they intently listened to him. They really listened to him. They were eager to hear what he had to say. Now this tells me that Philip was an awesome preacher. He was one that you wouldn't fall asleep to. And he was one that was excited about what he... I, I like to compare myself to Philip. I, I like to think that you're at least listening to me. You might not, but I like to think that, that you're intently listening and eager, and, and I get excited because, man, what better news do we have to share with people than about Jesus? I mean, we can share all this great stuff, and we can be so excited about so many different things, but when it comes to Jesus, is the greatest message ever. Why, I mean, why should we not be excited about that? Because in the name of Jesus, people can be dead, but raised to life. I mean... Jesus is awesome. And Philip's going around, he's telling everybody about Jesus. I love this. He's telling everybody about Jesus. And they were like, give us more and give us more. He had a whole entourage of people following him. And he, his ministry, his ministry was rich. It was so rich. Look at verse 12. He said, but now the people, they believe Philip's message of good news. I love that. Good news concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. As a result... Many men and women were baptized. So he was going around telling everybody about the good news. The good news. And we're still telling people today, over 2,000 years from now, or from then, the good news that Jesus came, that he died, and that he rose again to give us life. And because of that, we can believe on Jesus, we can have forgiveness of our sins, and we can have everlasting life, but we will never, ever taste the heat of from hell will forever reign with Jesus. That's the message of the good news. That is our hope. And that good news is what we get to celebrate today. Because the end result of that was, did you catch the last result of that? They heard this good news. They, they were excited. They received it. They heard it. And I love this. As a result, many men and women were baptized. Whenever the name of Jesus is preached, Whenever that is the, when it's focused around Jesus, when it's all about Jesus, the end result is people are going to be baptized. That's going to be the end result. Because as you're going to be seeing here, we've already talked to these kids that's going to be baptized. And all, that we're doing this because we are following Jesus. And if we're following Jesus, this will be our end result. Now, if we're following everything else, that might not be. But because we're following Jesus, this will be our end result. And his end result was seeing people saved, seeing people baptized, seeing people saved, seeing people baptized, seeing them saved, seeing them baptized. That repeated process over and over. And you'd think you'd get tired of it, but I'm telling you, when people come up out of that water, there's just something that's exciting about it because you're seeing the dead come to life. And that is exciting to us because it's all about Jesus. I get excited about this good news. It ain't old news. Good news. Because Jesus died for a wretched sinner like me. And you too. You in your messed up state. You with all your family issues. You with all your hate, sin, whether it be drugs, whatever. He died for you. And he rose again that you might believe and have everlasting life. Forgiveness for your sins. Praise God for Jesus and his love for us. That's our good news. And we get to celebrate that today. And I'm so excited about this. So excited. 
So excited. Because we get to participate in what they were participating in here. In his baptism, what he got to participate in, baptizing these people one after the other after the other. We're talking about hundreds, if not thousands of people being baptized. Could you imagine being that way? That here you are, you're baptizing people, and you've been in the water so long, you're like a prune, you're so shriveled up. Baptizing that many I want to experience that. I mean, I want to be baptizing so many people that I am shriveled up and we got to have tag team. Okay, it's your time to baptize some people. Come on in here. Anybody with me? Because I want to do that. To see so many people saved. Not that we're having a part of that, but that we get to be joined with what Jesus is doing, His work right here in Southwest Virginia, Northeast Tennessee. But seeing lives change. I like the good news of Jesus. It's not about the church. It's about Jesus. And if the church is about Jesus, the end result is going to be baptism. Oh, that's what Philip done. He was experiencing this great revival. This great revival. His ministry was rich. He had a very rich ministry. And last week, we defined being rich as being plentiful, being bountiful, a lot, a lot. So we can be rich over money or we can be rich over things. His ministry was rich. And he was seeing all the effects of that. And it was all about Jesus. Then something happened. I mean, it was just like a switch. He sent all these thousands of people being saved. All these thousands of people being baptized. And he was being able to be there in the water and baptizing these people one after the other after the other. And then God spoke. This is in verse 26. As for Philip, the angel of the Lord came to him. And this is what he said. Go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. Here he is, he's having this rich ministry. Seeing all these people saved, all these people being baptized. And then the angel of the Lord comes down and says, Philip, I need you to leave this place. I need, I need you to leave this ministry that you've got going on here. Because i got somewhere else I want you to go. Now, a lot of times in, in what we like, we want to climb up, like in business, we want to climb up a corporate ladder. We want to leave one job to go to another job to make more money. A lot of pastors will leave one church to go to another church that's larger. I mean, you don't, you don't go backwards. You go, you go further, right? You want to go ahead. You want to make more money or you want to witness or preach to more people. You may quit teaching a Sunday school class so you can teach to a larger group of kids. You always want to go ahead. And God's calling Philip right now. He says, Philip, you had this great ministry. People's getting saved left and right. It's awesome. Now I want you to leave and I want you to go south. Now, is that a bad thing? It, it, is it a bad thing that God's calling him to leave this great big old ministry and go south? Now, here's why. Verse 27. So he started out. He left. He left this great ministry. He left all these people. He left this revival. He went out. So he started out and he met the treasure of Ethiopia. Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Kendak, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship and he was now returning Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. So he left this great big old flourished ministry. He had this whole lot of people. We might consider it maybe a mega church. I mean, a huge church, huge ministry. Everybody loved him. When they saw him, oh, there's Philip. He's the awesome preacher. People's getting saved. He's, oh, he's awesome. You walk in the street, there goes Philip. He's awesome. And he leaves all this group of people to go right over here where he meets one person. And this one person didn't congratulate him, didn't give him a high five and say, man, you're an awesome preacher, yay. He didn't even know him. And this, this one person he met was somebody we would consider unique. This guy was loaded. He was extremely rich. Now, look at how rich he was. First of all, he was a eunuch. That means that he was in the office of the queen. He worked directly for the queen. He was a treasurer. And I think was, so he was a treasurer. He had this great authority under this queen. He had his own private chariot. And the guy wasn't even driving. He had a chauffeur. Now, I know as kids, you always have a chauffeur. It's your parents. That don't count. But how cool would it be if you had a chauffeur? Somebody showed up in a little, you know, Monopoly outfit and came in and said, Hello, Mr. Johnson. Where would you like to go today? I want to go to... Walmart. 
Okay, let's go to Walmart and open the door for you and make sure you don't hit your head. Well, there's just some nice refreshments in there if you want it to. Turn on the TV. We have the satellite dish ready for you. How, you know, are you cold? You're hot? Are you comfortable? Drive you to Walmart. Everybody looking at you like, who's this celebrity getting out? I was like, who's this geek, you know, coming out? It'd be kind of cool to have a chauffeur, right? He had a chauffeur. That's how much money, that's how much, that's how rich he was. He had his own driver to drive it wherever you wanted. But do you see where he's coming from? He had his own chauffeur, but where he's coming from is Jerusalem. He'd been to church. He'd been to church. So here you got this rich guy. He's a treasurer. He works for the queen. He's in this royal family. He's got his own chauffeur and a carriage. And he's, he's coming back from church. But do you know what's unique about this whole passage? We don't know his name. We have no idea what his name is. All we know is he's a eunuch from Ethiopia. That's all we know. We know by his job. We know where he works from. We know by his carriage. We know that he has a driver. And he's sitting in his carriage. But he was coming. He was coming from church. And what he's doing in his carriage, he's reading the Bible. And now Philip has been called by God to leave this awesome, rich ministry and to go over here and speak to this one man. So here's where God speaks. Verse 29, the Holy Spirit said to Philip, now go over and walk along beside the carriage. So Philip, he ran over and he heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you're reading? Now, he ran over. The Holy Spirit talked to him and said, okay, Philip, here's the guy. Here's the reason why I want you to leave that ministry. It's right here. I want you to leave it. I need you to go talk to this man right here. This, this man right here. And so this is how excited he is about ministry. He's at, he, is, he is so excited about obeying God. He ran. I believe he sprinted to get over there. Now, growing up when your, your parents asked you to do something, did you go run and do it? Now, maybe if they told you to go jump in the pool or go get you some chocolate, you may have ran. But if they asked you to go sweep the floor, did you go, thanks, Mom, and run and do it? No, I guarantee you they had to beat you to get to you to sweep the floor or clean your room. He was excited. He ran. He was so excited. Now, why would you be excited to speak to one man when you was used to speaking to thousands? Philip found his ministry rich not by the people but by who he was obeying, and that was God. It wasn't about the flashiness of the people. It wasn't about the size of the congregation. It was about how well he obeyed God. And he was so excited, he ran to meet Philip. He ran. And when he did, he heard him reading Isaiah. He was reading Isaiah. And I like what he said. He said, do you understand what you're reading? Here you are in the middle of nowhere, traveling back from Jerusalem on a strange road, and here comes somebody you don't know that it's a preacher so here comes this somebody and he says hey do you know what you're reading and i like what he says he says no how, how can i if any, nobody here teaches me that's what he says in verse 31 he says no how can i unless somebody instructs me so then philip or he asked philip he said philip why don't you come up here in my car have you ever picked up a hitchhiker maybe some of you have i have We kind of get a little, you know, tensed up maybe. Like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? They're reaching for a piece of bubble gum. You're like, what? <laughs> I'm not encouraged to pick up hiccups. I'm just saying that there could be some stress there involved, you know, about who you've just picked up. But he asked him, do you understand what you're reading? He says, how can I let somebody instruct me? And then he asks Philip. He doesn't even know the man. He says, will you, will you come in my carriage with me? Will you, will you teach me? And so he does. This is verse 32. The passage of the scripture he'd been reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For he, It's all because of Jesus that we have hope in the future. And he's talking to this rich man. Very rich man. You're in this carriage and tell him about this good news about Jesus. And something happened. 
he met Jesus in that carriage. Remember, he was coming back from church. He was reading the Bible. But he heard the good news about Jesus. And they came, this is verse 36, and as they rode along, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here's some water. Why can't I be baptized? So he ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. Right then and there. He, met, he got saved. He gave his heart and life to Jesus. He got saved. And then he is so excited. He's like, why can't I be baptized? And Philip's like, why not? Let's go do it. And they went and they done it. Right then. That's, that's how simple following Jesus is. That it's not about you cleaning yourself up. It's not about you changing your ways before you meet Jesus. It's about meeting Jesus and allowing him to do a work and a change through you. God help any church that tells you you've got to clean yourself up before you come. You meet Jesus and let him do all the cleaning up. Because if we clean it up, it's going to fail. I've been there. Oh, this year I'm going to turn over a new leaf. I, I'm not going to do that no more. I'm not going to be ugly. I'm not going to say no bad words. I'm going to be nice to everybody. That would last a couple of hours. <laughs> Man, I fell off the bandwagon again. <laughs> Following Jesus is not like a, it's not like a New Year's resolution. It's not like a diet that you start. It's a life change. Yeah. That we believe that he did die for our sins. And that as he laid in that tomb, three days later, he arose. And because he arose, he overcame death and sin and the grave. And because of that, we believe on him. And when we do that, we get forgiveness for our sins. We will die. Our bodies, but not our soul. We are forever and ever in heaven with our Lord and Savior Jesus. That's how simple it is. And he heard this good news, this simplicity of the gospel. He's like, well, why can't you not be baptized? He was like, all right, let's go do it. And so they jumped off the carriage, they ordered to stop, and they went down and got baptized. He didn't baptize to clean himself up. He was already in church. Do you remember where he was coming from? He was coming from Jerusalem from worship. He was already going to church. He was even reading the Bible. But he did not have a relationship with Jesus. And if we're not careful, we'll fall in that same trap. Oh, yeah, I believe in God. Yeah, I'm, I know who Jesus is. But do you know him personally? There's a difference. We can know all about somebody. You know, I have a general knowledge about baseball, but you put me in the game, I'm going to get killed. I know, I know a lot about wrestling. I mean, flying and Rick flying. I mean, I know a lot about Rick. But you put me in the ring, I'm going down. I've not been trained. I don't know that. I love football. Running backs, tackle. I, I love this. But I'm telling you, I will get murdered if they put me in the line. Right? I know all about a little of this stuff. I don't know it personally. But my Savior Jesus, oh, I know him. He's forgiven me. And I have a relationship with him that's unlike any other. And I have a life all because of Jesus. I know him personally. Do you know Jesus? Not know of him. Not know about him. Do you know Jesus? These two men, they both, they both had an idea of Jesus. Philip had a personal relationship with Jesus. This eunuch, he didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus. He knew of him. Was already going to church, already worshiping. But he didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus. So he met Philip. He came up into his car. They started talking about the Bible. And he began to tell him about the good news about Jesus. The unit believed. And in showing his dedication to show the world his new life changed. They stopped the carriage. And he got baptized. And he showed the world. My old life, my old self, it's dead. I'm raised up a new life in Jesus. Now what do these two men have to do with you? We have... Two completely different men. But they both were rich. One had a great rich ministry. The other one had all what we consider the earthly things. He had the car. He had the clothes. He had the job. He, I mean, he got to go home to the royal palace. We don't even know where Philip. We don't even know where he slept. All we know is he absolutely loved God. 
with everything that he had. And here you see in this story these, these men. The change that Jesus made in them. From here, Philip's telling everybody about Jesus. He had thousands saved. But he leaves to go follow where Jesus is leading. And he speaks of this one man. And this one man hears the good news about Jesus. And now he is excited. Here's how excited he is. This is verse 39. When they came up out of the water, when, Philip, when he came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. So Philip left him. But the eunuch never saw him again. But he went on his way rejoicing. Now this stuck out to me. The eunuch, the rich man. He had the car. He had the, he had the chauffeur. You know, he had the job. He had, he had all this stuff going for him. He didn't rejoice in all that things. He didn't rejoice in his house. He didn't rejoice in the size of his farm or the size of all of his flock, his livestock. He didn't rejoice in his treasure job or all the money he made. He didn't start rejoicing until he met Jesus. This is what made him rich. By earthly standards, he was rich by earthly standards. But when he met Jesus, he became rich because now he has inherited everlasting life. He has now found his life and his identity not in the amount of money in his wallet, not in how shiny his car was or, or how big his home was. He found life in Jesus, and he was rich. Two men, two completely different lifestyles. The one common denominator was Jesus. One was trying to find him. Going to church, he went to Jerusalem. He was going, he was doing everything right. Going to church trying to read the Bible, but he didn't have that personal relationship with Jesus until he met Philip. Philip began to share with him about the good news. There, that day in the road, in that carriage, he gave his life to Jesus. And to show the world, he got baptized. And because of that, he started rejoicing. We think that money is going to make us happy. We, we think that shiny new things is going to make us happy. But I'm telling you, if all you're searching for is that, you will die miserable. I remember being 19 and so excited and I, I, wanted, a, I wanted a cool car. I, I wanted a cool car. I had a car. I had a 1989 Ford Escort. It was red. It started, it ran. But it wasn't, there was, there was nothing cool about it. You know what I mean? I was not, I wanted, I wanted a cool car. That's what I wanted. So, reluctantly, I finally, after like two years, I finally taught my dad into cosigning. As a matter of fact, he wasn't even going to cosign. My mom was going to cosign, but they wouldn't let her, so dad had to do it. So my dad, he, reluctantly, he done it. And I had this brand new, shiny Honda Civic. It wasn't like a cool Mustang. It was a Honda. I thought, it was awesome. It was black and it was shiny. And I washed the paint off that thing. It wouldn't matter. It would be snowing outside and I'd be out there washing it. <laughs> it didn't matter. I thought it was awesome. And then I would get angry. I remember I had it on the carport. And the dog hit a hoe that was leaning up against the carport. And it did, and it fell over, and it put like a little dent in my car. And I was like, come on, it's my new car. And my dad was right there. He saw me like, I like had an incredible Hulk moment there. It was like unreal. My dad, he took me to the side, and he said, son, if all you're going to find is your treasures in this car, you will be miserable. Man, he was right. You know what happened to that car? You know where it's at right now? It's in a landfill. But my Jesus lives. John 3.16 makes it very simple to us. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not die, but inherit everlasting life. I live for the money. I live for the cars. I want the flashiness. But it all got old. Those new clothes, they got old. Those new shoes, they got dirty. That car, 
cost a whole lot of money. But Jesus was completely free. All I had to do was accept and believe. And he rocked me to my core. Changed my life all because of Jesus. The good news that he came and he died and he rose again to give us life and give us hope. Now what in the world does this message have to do with you today? Well, you've got two different people here. Some of you are like Philip. Man, you're on fire for Jesus. And you've got, you've got this excitement. You're excited about Jesus and you're excited about your church. Here's what you need to do. Keep following Jesus. I don't care where it is. It's not about the church that you go to. Every church, here's the one thing you look for. If they preach Jesus from the States, then you found a good church. Jesus is what it's all about. You go and you find you a place where you can serve Him and work for Him. Be excited about your church. Be excited about your relationship with Jesus. But be like Philip. Follow Him wherever, you, wherever it is that He's leading you to go. Wherever. Follow Jesus. Some of us, we need to get a little bit more excited about it. Like it. It's not good to keep it all to ourselves. We need to share that good news. Invite people to church. And that's what some of us really need to do. We need to step up our relationship with Jesus. Our actions with Jesus. Invite others. Tell them about Jesus. Tell other people what Jesus has done for you. Here in just a minute, you're getting ready to see these people get baptized. We're going to give the opportunity for them to share why they want to be baptized today. And you're going to hear some small answers. You may hear some large answers. But here's the sum of it all. Jesus died for us. Yep. And it's our duty. It's our responsibility to tell the world. That's your responsibility. Invite people to church. Tell them where they can meet Jesus. Maybe you're like the other guy. Maybe you're like the eunuch. Now, I'm not saying you're rich. But maybe you're searching for something. He was searching hard. He was going to church. He was coming from Jerusalem. He was in the chariot. He was reading his Bible. Doing what we would consider everything right. But he didn't know Jesus. My question to you is, do you know Jesus? If your answer is yes, you know Jesus is great, then go tell somebody about it. But if your answer is, I maybe know him, but I don't know him. Then maybe today is the day when you meet Jesus. Maybe the day is the day that you hear about the good news of Jesus. He died and rose again for you. And you can put your faith and trust in Him forever for the sins that you've committed. And now your new life can be in Christ. My question is, both of these guys were rich. Which one are you? Are you the Philip? Or are you the eunuch? Do you already have a relationship with Jesus? You just need to be on fire. Or is your relationship with Jesus... Not where it needs to be. Because what's amazing privilege that we have is that we can take care of that today. By putting our faith into the one who died for us. I want to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes just for a moment. Father God, I pray right now that your Holy Spirit would speak into us. You'd fill us up, God. Search us and make us known. Do a work in us right now, God, as your Holy Spirit speaks. As you continue to pray and Hands are bowed, eyes are closed. This is just between you and God. There's some of you here today. You're the Philip. You're searching. You want to obey God. You want to do what he says. You need to start sharing. You need to tell people. You need to invite him. Some of you have already been doing it, and I'm going to encourage you that you would step it up. Some of you, maybe you haven't done it in a while, I'm going to encourage you that you would take charge right now, that you would start telling people about Jesus. You invite them to church. Nobody's looking around. I just want to pray for you. That's you. That you're the Philip. You need to start telling people about Jesus. Or you need to keep on telling people about Jesus. You need to invite them to church. I want to pray for you. You just slip your hand up and I may do that. I want to pray for you. Hands are going up everywhere. I want to pray for you. That you would tell people. You would invite. You would share about the good news of Jesus. God, I pray right now that you would set your church on fire for you. But this message that we have, it's not old news. It's still good news because he is alive right now sitting at the right hand of God. And I pray, God, right now that you would set us so on fire that when people hear us and they see us, they know that we're going to be talking about our church and our relationship with Jesus. God, I pray right now that you'd fill us up, that we would leave this place today sharing about what all Jesus has done for us. Help us as we invite people to church. Help us, God, as we share what Jesus has done for us. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you'd do a great work in your community. And may you use us. As you continue to pray, there's others of you here today. You're the eunuch. You've been searching, and you've been searching. You've been looking in all the wrong places. And right now, right now, God's knocking at your heart, just like he did that eunuch. 
Today you've heard about that good news of Jesus. He loves you so much. He died for you to give you life. Right now, right now, would you call on Him? Would you call on Him right now to save you from your sins? You don't have to question it. You don't have to second guess it. You don't have to doubt it. Call on Him right now and say, Lord Jesus, save me. Save me from my sins. Take my life and make me brand new. Fill me up, God, with your love. I believe Jesus died and rose again for me. Forgive me of my faults. Forgive me of my failures. Now take my life as I live for you. You prayed that prayer today, then now you belong to God. Just like that eunuch. You belong to Him. Nobody's looking around and heads are bowed and eyes are still closed. If you prayed that prayer today to receive Jesus as your Savior, you slip your hand up that I may pray for you. God, you're awesome. God, you're awesome. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you'd fill us up. That you'd do a great work inside of us and that you would do only what you can do. That we would be excited about what you're doing in us and through us and that we would tell everybody about Jesus. How amazing he is that he died and that he rose again for us. To give us life. No longer do we have to live and walk around in fear and defeat, but we can walk in fear full excitement and authority because we belong to the one who holds the world in his hands. God, thank you so much for giving us Jesus. This message of the good news, it's not old, it's not dead, it's not tiresome. It's new and it's alive. Thank you for the life that you've given us through Jesus. I pray, God, right now that you do a great work in us and fill us up, God, with your glory that we'd be excited to share all about Jesus and what he's done for us. God, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you give God some awesome praise? Mm -hmm. Thank you, God.